Welcome to another edition of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me, as always, is new Mike L. Kevin Jank. Boom goes the dynamite, Mike Dell. Because in this issue of Batman, yeah. the Riddler tries to murder uh, Batman with some dynamite. But uh, this is issue 292 from 1977. I had this issue when I was a child. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I've I've been on a Batman kick lately, listening to a lot of uh, his audio adventures and also old like records from the seventies that yeah. I remember as a kid. I would they're, like to hear those. Yeah, that sounds they're, fun. They're on YouTube and they're pretty ridiculous. And this comic that we'll be reading today is very ridiculous. Yeah, so. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> I don't, little outlandish in parts. <laughs> And yeah, we'll get into all that in a minute. But before we do, let's remind everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We're up to 225 subscribers, Jack. Hey. 225. Hey, yeah, picked up a couple. So, uh. Building we're mar- momentum. We're marching toward, uh, 500. And that's the goal. So thank you for the support. And also, my monkey book is out. Go, uh, monkey flip. Over, it's available on 19books.com, amazon.com. If you like monkeys. <laughs> and who doesn't? Well, actually, he's a chimp. He's elf references. There isn't a single elf reference in this entire book. What? <laughs> I know, that is shocking. I didn't even realize it until right. you just mentioned it. But it's, uh. Come on, this world. Everything's but, turvy, Mike Dell. I know, no elf references from reading Batman. But the chimp. Is a detective, and he solves a murder involving uh, professional wrestling. So you'll love it. And it's fun for the whole family. Monkey Flip, available now. All right, so let's get to this here, Jank. Uh, yeah, I picked Batman just because I've been on that Batman kick lately. And I wanted to go back to one uh, from my childhood. And I guess I was when I was a kid, I was really stupid, apparently. I, bought, uh, <laughs> I was buying Batman and stuff. That's a big... It's, the Bill. big uh, he, villain in this – well, there's a lot of villains in this sh- issue, but the uh, mm. the main one is the Riddler, and we've never actually talked about him on the show. His, his real name is Edward Nigma. Yeah. It's a coincidence. Right. Enigma. <laughs> I know. I love it. <laughs> and his first it's appearance – With Robert Pence, and like, they tried to change it. It's like, why? Why would you uh, do that? That movie is so <laughs> terrible. That is not Riddler. I, I don't know what that guy was. He wasn't the Riddler. He was terrible. <laughs> No. Uh, his first appearance was in Detective Comics 140 uh, from 1948, and he was created by Bill Finger and Dick Sprang. Oh, now, man. Finger and lot, Dick. There we go. That's a team. A lot of people may not realize this, but uh, Dick Sprang was my porn name in the 90s. <laughs> I was a young man trying to make my way in the world. Yeah. And you had to find LCS hockey somehow. Yeah. Uh, so the Riddler, though, he's just a guy who always leaves clues and riddles because he's trying to show how smart he is. Now he's smarter than the Batman. So he's like, I'll leave you clues. You won't be able to figure them out. Yeah, it's like a compulsion, basically, where he can't help but leave clues to his next crime. Like, it's just something he has to do, like washing your hands before you leave the house like 30 times. And, of course, in the old 60s Batman, Frank Gorshin played the Riddler. and He was awesome. He was the best. <laughs> He's literally yeah. the best villain of all the villains on that show. I mean, I love Burgess Meredith. Obviously, he was great. Uh, it's Mickey, so, I mean, I, I got to love him. And Cesar Romero is Joker. Awesome as well. But Frank Gorshin was the best. I mean, Just, Julie Newmar as Catwoman was something special. But, yeah. yes, Frank Gorshin. <laughs> uh, I mean, he didn't look as good in the leotard as, <laughs> as Julie Newmar, that's for sure. But he was amazing. And then the, they had Gomez Adams come in there. Yeah, like I think after yeah. the first season, he was like asking for way more money, so they just kind of <laughs> got rid of him. And I think they tried bringing in like a puzzler at some point, which is pretty much like the same thing. <laughs> they sucked to the puzzler. They, they got, you know, John Aston to do it for a little bit. And I think they finally mm. got Frank Gorshin back for like one episode in the third season with Batgirl. And uh, that was about it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh... So that's uh, the any other Riddler uh, stories or anything that comes to mind? Did you ever read any famous Riddler tales? Uh, you know what? As beloved as the Riddler is, I don't know that there's a whole lot of you know beloved Riddler stories. Uh, I guess Hush he does play kind of a key role. 
um, where it's kind of determined that he he has brain cancer essentially, and uh, in order to cure himself, he finds one of Rachel Ghoul's Lazarus pits, and uh, it kind of makes him a little bit insane, and uh, leads to a whole bunch of things in Hush. Uh, he's kind of it turns out to be you know part of the big behind the scenes cons- conspiracy there. And I think at one point, like a little bit after that, like he reformed himself at some point, like whatever trauma was causing him to be, you know, criminal essentially got cured and he just kind of became a detective and was actually helping the cops and stuff for a little while. So that was interesting. Sounds terrible if you ask me. <laughs> I and... think he re- eventually it was another like, coconut on the head did it or something like that. <laughs> Basically something that stupid. And of course, on the big screen there, uh, Jim Carrey played the Riddler. Yeah, that was awful. <laughs> I mean, that movie's okay, and he it was terrible like Riddler, but <laughs> I don't know. It's better than Batman and Robin. Like, at least it has some redeeming qualities. <laughs> <laughs> They're all awful. All right, um, the animated series from the '90s. That Riddler was great. Uh, he mostly yeah. just wore the suit rather than the spandex, which is cool. Uh, I love the little green suit with the little bowler, little bowler hat. hat. Yeah, and usually it carries like a cane too, with like a question mark on it, right? Yeah. Oh God, everything's a question mark with this guy. Yeah, <laughs> his dick is probably shaped like a question mark. Hey, come on, it's a family show. <laughs> All right, so uh, this issue we're reading today, it is part of a four issue arc, mm-hmm. and we are in issue two. Now, Jack, did you go back and forth and read the whole arc? I did not read it all. I did flip around a little bit to see some key things that I had questions about. Yeah. Uh, and boy, <laughs> they were it's, reaching for this one. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous premise ever. <laughs> Basically, what happens is uh, Batman allegedly dies. Yeah, I was like, how do they? How did they think that Batman is dead? And I looked back, and oh, just somebody wrote it in the sky real big one day. And, <laughs> and dead, and well, like, it, oh, well, it, it started. Dead. Rumors started going in the underground, you know, on the streets. The criminals were saying, hey, the Batman's dead. Someone killed the Batman. You know, and it just started spreading. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they wrote it in the sky. They did everything to let the people know. But there's there was no official word, you know. So all the criminals are like, oh, they're trying to cover it up. So, uh, you know, as criminals don't overrun the city or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but the villains, they wanted to uh, get together and figure out who killed the Batman because that guy, he deserves a handshake and a pat on the back. Whoever did that. <laughs> yeah. You get a cookie. You get a box of steaks. Good job on you. So in issue one, oh, oh wait. To, so to figure out how to do this, uh, the all the Batman villains, they get together and they have a trial. <laughs> they rouse out, rouse out ghoul. Is that a <laughs> ghoul? Yeah. He seems like judge. a place to be the judge. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to say that right now. He doesn't He's seem like he plays you know, real well with most of these villains. <laughs> and uh, the prosecuting attorney is uh, Two Face. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, he's going back to his old job essentially. Now the uh, the jury is made up of the Mad Hatter, the Spook. Mm-hmm. I have no idea who the Spook is. <laughs> um, yeah, Poison Ivy, Scarecrow, Signal Man. Who we've actually talked about on this show before. And Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Jury. He's, he's not looking so cool yet. They had not. Oh, he worked. looks like a deep sea diver. Yeah. Mr. Freeze. <laughs> yeah, pretty lame. Yeah, it's just Raz Algo. I never know how to say his name. Um, so, an issue, in the first issue, uh, Catwoman takes the stand because she says, Yeah, I killed the Batman. Yeah. And like, All right, tell us how you killed the Batman. So she comes up with this cockamamie story. Uh, like, I she, to him until he just was drained. <laughs> no, 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 no. That involved uh, there's some sort of a flood, and uh, or something a ship sank or something. I don't know. I mean, she was floating on some cage made of a uh, special type of wood or whatever, and Batman was trying to grab onto it. And she also had one of her cats on her, like a big leopard on the thing. And Batman was trying to cling to the cage, and she kicked his hand free, and he drowned. That's how she said she killed the Batman. But then Two Face proved that hey, that panic, that cage you uh, you were talking about, it doesn't float. And he did his little test in the in the jury in the courtroom. He drops the cage in water and it sinks right in. He goes, therefore, lady, you are lying. 
You mm-hmm. did not kill the Batman. You are dismissed. So yeah, she went off there. Two face. He's good. He uh, he does the same thing here. Yes, and that brings us to this issue, and we'll talk about the others after we get through this. But uh, it's uh, the Riddler takes the stand, and mm-hmm. that's where we're at. So why don't you? Oh, the creators here are uh, the writer is a fellow named David Vern Reed. I never heard of him. Are you familiar with his work at all, there, Jake? No, can't say that I am. No. He was born 1924, died 1989. 162 writing credits at DC. His first publication was Batman 56 in 1949. And he did 66 Batman issues, and he was the primary writer from 267 to 304. So, like, this guy wrote a big chunk of Batman's history. Never heard yeah, of him. <laughs> yeah, did not go down in history very well. He also did a bunch of detective comics and World's Finest. He created the character Deadshot. Oh, look yeah. at that. Is that that guy from the Suicide Squad? Yeah. We'll we'll find out more about him, hopefully, this year on the show. Eh, that's okay. (laughs) And then uh, he's also credited with reworking the bat plane. (laughs) bat plane. (laughs) Was it just like a normal-looking plane before? It's like a normal idea. No idea. (laughs) And the uh, artist here is a guy named John Cownan, C-A-L-N-A-N. Again, never heard of him. Born 1932, died in 2016. 148 penciling credits, including 15 Batman issues from 291 to 309. He also did The Witching Hour, The Unexpected, Superman, Family, and Ghosts, which I guess was some horror book back in the day. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, not a very famous creative team here we're dealing with. No, not not exactly the uh, the cream of the Batman crop. Yeah, go ahead. I do feel like this storyline uh, kind of lasted because there was two different Batman the Animated Series episodes that this kind of reminded me of, like this premise. Really? Uh, there was one where it was like almost got him, where it was a bunch of villains like playing cards, talking about how they almost killed Batman one time. Uh, and then I think the final episode of like the new Batman Adventures was basically there was some kind of a judge who had Batman on trial and like all the the – all the the villains were like the jury and stuff like that, and I think it ended up being Two Face who was the judge guy. So hmm. there are elements yeah. of this I think got got mined for sure. So somewhat memorable in that regard. But this is just absurd, though, right? All the villains getting together, sitting around, having a trial. Yeah, <laughs> it does seem a little <laughs> strange. These people aren't really known to play well, to, you know, that well with others. Yeah, I don't know, man. He's, like, always just in, like, you know, India or some far-off country, like, running his League of Assassins. Why is he going to come to Gotham and hang out with a bunch of criminals? This was a weird time for Batman because it was before, you know, this was nine years before old Dark Knight and everything. Yeah. Um, but he was really, like, kind of goofy at this point, like, just comically, like, odd the Batman stories. Um, yeah, I think they were trying to get away from the 60s, you know, just – the car, the or the the TV show, and kind of shake that image a little bit, but not too much. Uh, it was still pretty goofy. Yeah, this is very cartoony what we're dealing with here. So, yeah. uh, all right, let's uh, look at the cover. This is a Jim Aparo cover. And would you like to describe it for us, Jack? Sure. Uh, so yeah, we got the little green DC logo up there. I guess that's for the Riddler. That's pretty cool. Um. And then we got the – it just says the, the – the way they show the, the issue number is kind of weird, just in the right corner in, like, a very weird, just normal-looking font. They don't try to draw attention to it at all. But uh, then we got the Batman logo, which is kind of the classic guy, uh, like the 66 show type of logo, where it's got Batman's face and then, like, the little cape kind of doing the Batman symbol. And then in front of it, it's got Bat on one side and Man on the other side. Uh, it's a cool logo. I always like that one. Pretty good. Uh, and then we got a shot of the Riddler uh, just holding up Batman's cowl. And he's saying, I plead guilty to the murder of Batman. I give you exhibit A, what's left of him. And then we get a little box that says the testimony of the Riddler. And, uh, yeah, a lot of this coverage is kind of wasted. He's just kind of standing in like a crater. <laughs> um, I like it, though. 
I game. like it. Yeah. And uh, Batman's cow is outlined by the moon, kind of holding up the moon. Kind of turn up. A lot of browns and orange. Mm-hmm. And uh, some pink in there. But yeah, I like the cover. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, the Riddler does like his question marks. Holy hell. So many. <laughs> yeah. Over. All right, so now we open it up and we get a big uh, splash page. Again, this is the uh, DC where they show you a clip of what comes later on the splash page. And it's uh, the Riddler up on a fire escape of a building just gunning down the Batman, shooting him in the chest with a Tommy gun. And, yeah, we don't see, like, blood or bullets, holes or anything, just, like, uh, little lines hitting him in the chest. Yeah, it's so, like shooting him with a flashlight, to be honest. Like, he's <laughs> shooting a light on his chest. <laughs> it looks like, doesn't really look like bullets at all. And uh, what's the Riddler saying here? I've lived to see it with my own eyes and do it with my own hands. The Batman is dead. And, uh, <laughs> who killed the Batman? The greatest who done it of the century. Only this mystery works in reverse. They were guilty uh, candidates galore claiming the honor. So this <laughs> is the testimony of the Riddler. It's a mystery in reverse, like. Isn't that most mysteries? Someone's dead, and now you have to figure out who did it. <laughs> That's pretty much standard mystery. This isn't Columbo. They're reinventing Well, it. I guess uh, the reverse is that the guilty party is admitting that they did it, or claiming that they did it. Yeah, multiple or, people claiming yeah. it. So you're proving that the guilty party did not do it, as opposed to proving. I guess that's the reverse here, the old switcheroo. Yeah. But uh, that certainly is weird. And then uh, Testament of the Riddler, the second installment in our new mini-series, Where Were You on the Night Batman Was Killed? <laughs> and now well, I'm guessing at the same time, like, they had Detective Comics going as well, though, where Batman was clearly very alive. <laughs> yes. I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure how many people were buying into the fact that Batman was dead. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I wonder if this was a big media blitz. Oh, Batman's dead. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I somehow doubt it. And uh, how, how do you feel about the narration boxes being like bat shaped sometimes? <laughs> I mean, that's cool. I, <laughs> I, it as bat as I could. <laughs> it looks kind of like a knockoff marshmallow and like a uh, Frankenberry cereal or something. Like a little bat <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> but, yeah, there's just a hint of a shape, but not really yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> so we go inside the courtroom and uh, we see the Joker just uh, laughing it up, taking a photo with Lex Luthor. Yeah, because Lex Luthor is also one of the people claiming to have killed Batman. Yeah, that's, a, that's an odd choice. So many rogues gallery, you know, for Batman to choose from. And they're like, let's give an issue to Lex Luthor. <laughs> like, I don't know. There's I'd a be ex- disappointed if it was L- Luthor that killed Batman. And uh, the guy taking the photo is the Cavalier. Not familiar with his work. <laughs> but, uh, he think, looks awesome. I think him and two of his buddies made a pretty nice candy bar at some point. Cause that's <laughs> and we are we meet our jury and we see Raz Al Ghul, and here comes Two Face. I call the next claimant Edward Nigma, the Riddler. Yeah, Which he's like blowing to... uh, blowing question marks in the smoke that he's he's smoking a cigar. He's blowing question marks in the smoke. Yeah, green smoked question marks. Yep. And, and then the little cigar pops because he says my testimony is going to be like this cigar and it explodes. Mm-hmm. Explosive yeah. testimony from the Riddler. <laughs> yep. So he's but, uh, uh, cross-examining he the Riddler. And, and something like that and you'll be held in contempt of court. So at least they're maintaining due process here. <laughs> yeah, proper court etiquette. <laughs> yeah. This Raza Hagul, he's a stickler. <laughs> courtroom decorum. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, Jake, this uh, whole thing here, I'm very, uh, I want to need you to explain the purpose of why he had to kill Batman twice. Yeah. Because <laughs> this, this plot <laughs> makes no this, sense. This issue could have been a lot shorter. <laughs> yes. Why don't you describe uh, how he killed him the first time for everybody? Uh, so the first time, uh, they're out in the middle of the night. He's already given Batman a riddle and, uh, 
He's waiting, or or Batman's. Oh, here we go. He, he's Batman's driving in the woods. Somehow the Riddler knows that Batman's going to be coming around this turn any second, and he's got a mirror placed in the where he, well, he's going to pull it down, and it's going to hang in front of the road. And on the, the mirror is a riddle for Batman. Uh, so when Batman he comes up upon it with his bright headlights and realizes, oh crap, there's a mirror there, and he stops real quick. And then with the lights shining on the mirror, he can see the riddle. Shall we play the Riddler's game with meaning changed but word the same? Then find the founder who found fame before he founders in his name. Yeah, that's not even a good riddle. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the mirror just explodes. Yep. And uh Riddler's having a good old time in the courtroom telling everybody about this. <laughs> yeah. Posture's very relaxed in that chair. Yes. He's trying to turn into a lazy boy, but it's just a wooden chair. So then Batman figures out that riddle. He's talking about some guy. Uh, what is he? He owns a boat or something, and his name is Shoals. Yeah. And, yeah it's pretty awful. And uh, John Shoals shot to death on a boat that foundered in the Shoals. The same word, but the meaning changed. Yeah, anytime a riddle involves the word Shoals, I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> Nope. This should be like those popsicle jokes where they all involve, involve bison. <laughs> like everyone was, every one of them I remember when we'd have them at my grandma's house was always like, what do you call like a lazy bison? It'd be like a buffalo loaf. I was like, <laughs> wow, that, that joke really left a mark. You remember it all these years later. I remember so many of them were about bison. They all had the <laughs> same, same aspect. You were buying some weird popsicles. <laughs> but, uh, so Riddler, I don't know, after Batman figures out the Shoals thing, uh, the Riddler is like, I don't know, he's happy that he did it? Uh, I don't know, but they're figuring out a way to ambush Batman then. Yeah. Because instead of a platform. <laughs> and yep. they're going to um, rob his gun cell all in place, and they're they're getting ready for Batman's appearance. Yeah, they're going to rob an armored truck, uh, but Batman was hiding in the back of the truck, and he hops out, and he just smashes that one guy's head in the ground. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and get him. He's going to toss him or do the bane and break him over his knee, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, then he's doing, like, uh, gymnastics routines and stuff. And uh, <laughs> he's kicking dudes in the face. And all the while, Riddler's up on the fire escape just watching his guys get hammered by Batman. Oh, look, Batman just hammers that dude in the face repeatedly then blows <laughs> on his knuckles to cool him off. They're, uh, he's grabbing the guy in the purple suit like by the hands and like swinging him around like he's a little kid but knocking him into the other guys <laughs> that's pretty fun so then Batman he turns around though and he looks oh there's Riddler up on the fire escape and he just guns him down shoots him right in the chest yeah. just like we saw in the uh, splash page and he's dead look at the Riddler he's celebrating <laughs> he's pumping his hands <laughs> most. yeah I just killed the Batman yep. mm. finally the end of the Batman who would have thought the last time I riddled him, it would be with bullets. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. pretty good. <laughs> uh, but whoever was driving the armored car, they they escape while you know Batman is dying in the street, and yeah. uh, Riddler and his men chase the armored car, and they can't find it, so they just leave Batman dead in the streets. And they're like, ah, he's dead. Why do we care about it? You know? <laughs> Batman would never wear a bulletproof vest or anything like that. <laughs> And then uh, we cut back to the court, and Two-Face says, hold it, Riddler. This is nothing like the claim you sent to the court. Mm -hmm. And uh, Riddler says, riddle me this, Two-Face. Why are you like an unemployed doctor? Never mind. The answer is because you have no patience. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so now Riddler, <laughs> now uh, he tells another story. Like, what was the point of that one? Because now he tells the story of how he actually killed Batman, I guess. I don't know. The only reason I could think of for this is to make it sound more believable. Like, oh, yeah, I tried to kill Batman, but it didn't work. But then finally it did. Like, maybe if he just was like, oh, I just shot Batman, they'd be like, no, that's too easy. <laughs> like, Batman would never <laughs> die that that easily. I, I don't know. So he goes he goes to some uh, swank party, and he, disc he pretends to be Bruce Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Now, how does this work? Like, no one there knows what Bruce Wayne looks like? Or sounds like? 
<laughs> I've never heard of the Riddler being that good at like impersonating people or you, like disguises. Is it something bigger than him as well? Just, like, is that it? Like <laughs> the Riddler yeah. seems to draw the Riddler with like a pretty pronounced chin, like a weird pointy chin. It does not seem very Bruce Wayne esque. I was very confused by this as well. Yeah. How not a single person at his party knows what Bruce Wayne looks like. Because they're all talking to him. They're all very excited that Bruce Wayne is there. But uh, <laughs> He's picking up every lady at the party. They're all coming after Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. But, uh, anyway, some rich guy is holding this uh, party for his wife or something because she's decided she wants to be a writer. Yeah, good decision oh. there, dummy. <laughs> and then uh, he right, says, hey, hey, to commemorate it, I got, I got her a typewriter made of gold, platinum, and ivory. It's key studded <laughs> with diamonds and rubies. The ribbon made of silk from a Ming Dynasty robe, and its case encrusted with emeralds. That's exactly wow. what I use to make my monkey book. <laughs> that same thing. And yep. uh, everyone's so excited to uh, look at this fancy typewriter. But the Riddler, he's uh, he's sneaking around the house. He wants to uh, he wants to get out of the way so his guys can come in and rob everybody, right? But yeah. Uh, when when he's sneaking up the stairs, a blue blur goes past him, Jank, and who is it? Well, it's Batman. Turns out he was not killed by those bullets actually at all. This is, I don't understand any of this. Yeah. Um, so apparently everybody knows that Batman and Bruce Wayne are like buddies. <laughs> like Yes. <laughs> they make several mentions of that where like, oh, that that seems odd. <laughs> And uh, Batman's beating everybody up. One of Riddler's guys, because they're trying to steal this typewriter. You know, it's a very expensive typewriter. <laughs> so, but then uh, Batman turns around and he sees the Riddler pretending to be Bruce Wayne. And it, he's startled when he sees him. <laughs> like, I, again, I don't understand any of this. Because none of it, clearly none of this happened. Right? That would or be my guess. guess. Yeah, this has all got to be made up because... Yeah, yeah. Rid- I, Riddler's just telling tales. But then why would he even make the point of Batman being startled to see Bruce Wayne? Because that, that's a good question. <laughs> the only startling would be if, oh, my God, there I am over there when I'm right here. How am I doing that? <laughs> but, I guess he did explain later on why he was startled. That kind of is why, how Batman foils his plot. So I guess there's some reasoning there. So if he's coming up with all these reasons of, I don't know why he'd be so detailed, but like, here's how Batman figured out my plan. Like, say you blew him up and call it quits. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, so he, uh, one of Riddler's guys comes up behind Batman, uh, walks him over the head, W-O-K, walk with a uh, uh, butt of a rifle, knocks him unconscious. Because, you know, you could have just shot him in the head. But no, he <laughs> whacks him over the head, <laughs> knocks him unconscious. And, uh, Riddler helps him up, and Batman's telling, hey, Bruce Wayne, don't you worry, buddy. You stay out of this. I'll handle it. Um, I love this. He's just like, he's so concerned about Bruce Wayne. Like, oh, Bruce, please don't help me. Riddler's like, that was a nasty shot you took. And Batman says, my fault. I was surprised to see you. I got careless. Yeah. Surprised to see you. All right. <laughs> so now Riddler, he can't let, he can't let, uh, let it be. You know, he wants to make it even more complicated. Because they got away with the typewriter. They should be happy. But now he goes off in the corner and he writes a little little riddle for Batman. And he says, hey, look, look, Batman, I found this over there. And he's like, oh, man, it's another one of them riddles. So uh, he, he tries to crack the riddle. And uh, do you want to read this one or is it even worth reading? I guess we could. We might as well. It's a Riddler story. I feel like you have to read the riddles. Yeah. Uh, so on this little napkin, he wrote, Batman, exclamation point. Once again... Take new aim, meaning different word the same. The object of the hunter's game is what gives the place its name. And what does it mean, Batman? Yeah. He's like, it means the Riddler was here, in disguise, right under my nose. And this is his way of telling me where to hunt for the stolen typewriter. And uh, he's like, the object of the hunter's game is prey, which changed to P-R-A-Y, must mean a church somewhere in Hunter's Road. And the Riddler's just laughing at him, like, in his head. He's like, ah, stupid Batman, that's not it at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he, he called up his guys, and he's like, hey, you heard me in exactly one hour, and don't argue, I have my reasons. 
So they're going to set up another little uh, surprise for the Batman. But the Batman surprises them. And he shows up. Yeah. And they're like, where are they? Like a quarry now? Yeah. Not a quarry. Yeah, because a quarry is another word for prey. So he's like, yeah, of course you're going to the quarry. I knew that all along. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously I knew you weren't Bruce Wayne because I just talked to Bruce Wayne. He's in Florida and I talked to him on the phone. <laughs> So I guess I get the whole detail of why <laughs> my <Okay. Batman's> surprise. <laughs> uh, but Batman says, I already intercepted your goons. It's just me and you, Riddler. Riddler takes out a knife and uh, he cuts a rope over like some, uh, a rope was holding a bunch of blocks of granite in the, in the air because that's not a safety hazard at all. At a <laughs> yeah. work site. And, uh, <laughs> And all the granite falls on him. It looks like it crushes him. Not observant at all to notice he's standing right below a thing of, you know, granite. Oh, Probably not the greatest detective. <laughs> yeah. Giant blocks of granite suspended over his head. But, uh, yeah, it looks like the granite smushes him, but it actually just pins him down. Like, it, it, he can't get out of the granite. And I would think his legs would be crushed, but, you know, what are you going to do? And also his skull, like, I don't <laughs> The way these things are falling, it, it looks like they're going to smash him good. But the Riddler, that's not enough for the Riddler. While, while Batman's trapped in this granite, uh, he walks over and he puts a box of dynamite next to him. And then he lights a lantern like a, with a wick and a flame there. And, and uh, he, he puts it beneath the dynamite. And he says, uh, hey, guess what there, Batman? That, that flame is going to ignite this dynamite in a couple minutes. And you're going to blow up dead. And Batman can't reach it. He, it's just out of his reach because that damn granite. And sure enough, Riddler walks away. Boom, he blows up and kills the Batman. Mm -hmm. That's how he did it. So now we go back to the uh, courtroom there, Jane. So <laughs> yeah, we, we go back to the courtroom, and uh, what does Two Face have to say about all this? Uh, so Two Face says, Indeed, tell me, Riddler, what does a poor man have that a rich man needs? He's giving him a riddle now. Yeah. Where there's nothing. He's like, Right. And that's what your testimony adds up to. Oh, there may be smidgens of truth in it. The Nero's party and the Doug typewriter caper were in the papers. Oh, okay, so I guess that did happen. Uh, some, all right, fair enough. Real. But as for killing the Batman, such clumsy fiction is a flagrant mockery of the court. I won't even bother to cross-examine this mythomaniac. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? And him and Rachel Ghoul have a little, you know, powwow. And uh, they're like, okay, you know what? We're going to have a recess, 15-minute recess. <laughs> then we'll reconvene outdoors. Which but I like, uh, what happens next? How did they get this done in 15 minutes? <laughs> well, they're villains. They got a lot of stuff, uh, they can, a lot of resources. But, yeah. uh, I like the Killer Moth guy. Did you ever hear of that guy? Killer yeah. Moth? Yeah. I remember he was in the Lego Batman game. Yeah, he's, oh. he's great. <laughs> he's talking to Luther. He's like, Luther, what in blazes is Two Face up to? And Luther says, we'll soon find out, Killer Moth. I'm going to mention your name because no one will know who you are. Yeah, yeah. Like, Luther's not hanging out with Killer Moth. He's like, you're you're beneath me. <laughs> me so, they cool get, to talk to. so they go outside, and uh, they constructed this little, like, uh, stake in the middle of a round wooden platform. And beneath like the platform, now, pretty much. they have a bunch of uh, boxes of dynamite. And that creates some dynamite from that same quarry, so... Again, they got there and back pretty quickly. <laughs> and they tie Riddler to the stake, a Joan of Arc situation, mm -hmm. and they light the flames beneath the dynamite, and they say, guess what, Riddler, you either admit you're lying or this whole thing's going to blow up here. <laughs> and and Riddler gets so scared, he, like, passes out. Yeah. But Two-Face <laughs> jumps up on the platform with him. All of a sudden, he's very bald in the front. <laughs> and Two Face jumps up on the platform with him, and he's he's making fun of Riddler. He's like, "Ah, oh, you're scared little weasel. You were lying the whole time." And they're like, "Hey, what? Why are you? Uh, aren't you scared there, Two Face?" And he's like, "No, no, no. Let me show you. Because apparently he's he used to work in a mine or something, a gold mine, where they're throwing dynamite. And he's like, "Here, look at this. I throw this dynamite, and it'll explode. But uh, fire doesn't ignite dynamite. It just burns it up." <laughs> Wow, yeah. this, this Two Face knows his stuff. Although I would still think he, that you know that's pretty dangerous to be jumping around on top of it when any kind of you know 
the fire is melting it, so it's sweating the nitroglycerin for sure. So <laughs> any kind of impact is going to set this thing off. You're jumping around on top of it. You've got it on stacks of wood that are probably falling and, you know, as they burn. Like, uh, like what's, what's, way? what's he care? As long as it only hits half of his body, he's, yeah, it's no big deal. As long as it hits the right <laughs> half yeah, of his right. body. The correct half, not the actual, because it's his left side that's all messed up. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he tells the jury, hey, you guess what? That shows that uh, the Riddler is lying, and he's a liar. He lies, and screw that guy. So he's dismissed from the stand. He is not guilty of killing the Batman. So they got to keep the trial rolling, and that's when the yep. issue ends. Next session, oh, the yeah. testimony of Luther. Yeah. That's a, that? that's a weird one. Uh, I don't know. I would have picked somebody else. The Penguin or something should be next. Yeah, it is weird that they put like. Well, I think they wanted to get Superman in the issue. You know. Oh, okay. And did you look at that <laughs> issue? Uh no, I kind of skipped that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's get to the climax of the story. <laughs> so basically, what happens is Luther has he has some sort of like uh, fancy brass knuckles. Some like high tech brass knuckles or some exoskeleton thing that makes him real strong, and he just beats Batman to death with his bare hands. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a short <laughs> issue, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but the trick is that Batman and Superman had had gotten together and they swapped out. So Superman was dressed as Batman when uh, uh, he was punching him, and like <laughs> when they show how it really happened. You see it from another angle, and while he's beating Batman in the back of the head and punching him, Superman's just smiling and laughing the whole time, and uh, <laughs> he's pretending to be dead when you know he's perfectly fine. And uh, so then they—that's how that didn't happen. So, but he knew then that it wasn't <laughs> like. Wouldn't he know that that was that that person didn't die? Uh, he thought he was dead. He just, he beat him to a death and he's like, oh, he Batman's just dead. there and pretended like, he, 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 I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, huh. oh, oh, you know what he did then? He, uh, he put Batman's body into like a rocket ship and shot him into space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's considerate of him. Yeah. I think yeah. To like, you know, now. launch him into <laughs> space to get rid of the body. But he is Superman. So once he got into space, Superman just flew out of there and, uh. And then Luther also had some spy satellite in, in space that was shooting lasers down. Because that's how he was going to kill Batman originally or something. Or, okay. or maybe he was going to attack Superman originally that way. Um, so while he's up in space, Superman just destroys that satellite, too. Oh. Uh, it's a real bad left. day. Really no reason. Like, why I go through all this effort to make Lex Luthor think he's killed Batman? <laughs> it's a real bad day for Lex Luthor. But, yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. I, I can't remember what the what the uh, hang up there was. With oh oh, I know, Two Face called Superman to the stand. That's right. That's <laughs> wow, right. Superman's just hanging out with all these villains. Huh? He's like, he for my next it. witness, I call <laughs> Superman, and Superman comes busting through the wall of the courthouse, and then he, cool he, yeah, and he sits down, he takes the stand, and uh, Two Face says, "Don't worry, everybody, we cut a deal. He's given everyone in this room immunity." And he will not arrest anybody as long as the trial is ongoing. <laughs> Why? Why would he do this? <laughs> so what's super? Why does he care who killed Batman? Or proving that Lex Luthor killed Batman when he he already knows he didn't. So Superman, when he leaves the stand, you know, after the after he, he testifies that yeah, you weren't killing Batman, you were punching me, dummy, and I'm fine, and I ruined your satellite and everything. So then he leaves the stand, and as he's walking out, he says, "Hey, hey Luthor." I promised everybody here I wanted to uh, take them into custody. Uh, was, you know, we're doing this trial. But the minute you step outside of this courthouse, mm -hmm. I'm arresting you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm <laughs> taking you to prison or whatever. And uh, so at the end, Luther is so mad at uh, Two-Face and everything. He says, you know what? I'd rather just take my chances with Superman. Then he bumps and he just walks out. So I guess Superman beats him up or whatever. Hang out with killer mom. And, but <laughs> it was great. He calls Superman to the stand. <laughs> All right. So uh, then in the fourth issue, it's the Joker. There we go. Yep, that's yeah. the money. Did you read this one? I did not read it. I flipped through it and saw what happened. And <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> so basically, uh, the Joker was uh, hiding off in some. Uh, well, he tried to rob some like uh, mint coat factory or something along those lines, and Batman stopped him. And but then he decided, you know what? I'm going to go back there the next night. <laughs> I think I'm just going to go back there again and try and uh, I don't know. But then oh, there's Batman again the next night. And he's like, what the hell? And uh, but he shoots Batman in the face with some dissolving liquid. Right in the face. <laughs> Leaving him just blank face now. No features, no nose, no mouth, nothing. <laughs> well, at first, it just disoriented him, I guess. And then uh, they were fighting, and Joker was punching him, and he, had, he was wearing a ring. And I guess the ring opened up and injected him with some laughing toxin, and it gave him too much by accident. He didn't mean to kill Batman, but uh, he, he did. So then Batman died from that, and then while he was dead on the ground... The Joker just poured all the rest of the dissolving liquid on his face. <laughs> I, I think his reasoning was, what was his reasoning exactly? He wanted to hide who Batman really was for some reason. So that sure, everybody that's... would know, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, so the guy kind of looked like the question. You know, just yeah. a right. flat face. And he also burned off his fingerprints and everything he said. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, Joker's like, yeah, I killed the Batman. Ha ha. But, uh, then what's the big reveal though, Jack? <laughs> uh, apparently that was not actually Batman. That was some guy who is so obsessed with Batman that he's just like, oh man, in case Batman ever goes down, I need to go everywhere Batman's been, yes. study up everything he's ever done, <laughs> and, uh, go in, in Batman costume, of course, too. To try yeah. and reinstate it in my head and figure out what Batman would do in any situation. So uh, this, is, this hapless son of a bitch just showed up and <laughs> Joker <laughs> murdered him. Yep. But this is very single white female. I mean, basically, yeah. the Joker did Batman a favor on this time. You know what I mean? Because there's only a matter of time before this guy tried to kill Batman. He was a loony too. It's so. kind of. It, also kind of reminds me of the Dark Knight. Remember where there was that guy pretending to be Batman wearing like hockey pads and then the Joker kills him on the news footage? <laughs> like I don't don't remember that at all. <laughs> I wonder if that came from this. So uh but the other big reveal though is during the uh, trial who is two faced, Jack? Oh, I didn't know I didn't apparently oh, look that far. Two- the whole time, Two Face was Batman in disguise. Oh, look at that! <laughs> no wonder he's such and, a good uh, attorney. Two Face was in prison at the time, and uh, Batman had him put Two Face in uh, solitary confinement for a couple weeks while they ran the trial, so no one would know where Two Face was. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so so the whole time, Batman was uh, poking holes in everybody's th- theories about how they killed the Batman. But then he knew the true circumstances. So when Joker got up there and it described how the guy's face was gone and everything, he's like, oh, here's my guilty party. And he captures the Joker. So Does he capture all the rest of them? And he's just letting everyone go. <laughs> yeah, they all had immunity. <laughs> them- I'm like, why are all these villains not in prison right now? <laughs> like, Batman's really sleeping so- on the job. All of these people have gotten out at once. So did Riddler really shoot Batman in the chest? Or was that just like, why was the point of that whole story about him shooting him in the chest? I'm guessing that did happen. Like, it could have happened the way he said it. He's just wearing, you know, he's got Kevlar on underneath and it didn't matter. I don't I have more questions than answers after reading this issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) It's it's pretty terrible. (laughs) <laughs> no one knew, knows what Bruce Wayne looks like. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> right, he's like out partying all the time, or at least he's supposed to be. Like, yeah. <laughs> nobody noticed. Just any guy with black hair will do. <laughs> so there it is, Batman two ninety two, and not the uh, the best era of the Batman. Like we said, it's kind <laughs> of a cross between sixty six Batman and. I mean, if someone does get murdered, so that's, uh. Yeah, they're stepping it up a little bit there, but. But. (laughs) Overall, it's pretty odd. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Jack? Uh, How about the writing here? Just kind of goofy, cartoony writing, right? 
Yeah, it was pretty goofy. Um, I could have used better riddles. I don't know. These were a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> I think my favorite was like the, the, uh, the 66 show where they were like, there are three men in a boat with four cigarettes and no matches. How do they manage to smoke? Huh. How do they <laughs> manage to smoke? They throw one of the cigarettes overboard and make the, the boat a cigarette lighter. <laughs> 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 it's pretty good. Yeah, that one always stuck in my head because I'm like, oh, that's, that's clever. <laughs> so how did that tie into like a crime? Do you remember? Like, uh... Uh, well, the Riddler was like meeting with an attorney and like he was pulling a gun on him, but it wasn't a real gun. It was actually just a cigarette lighter that uh, looks okay, like a gun. There you go. Yeah. So when they accost him, then the Riddler's like, I'm going to sue you for, you know, assaulting me for no reason. Yeah, uh, this was just a goofy premise. And yeah. This, it's an interesting premise, I guess, but not the uh, way they answered. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, don't I like the idea where you said where villains were sitting around a table talking about the time they almost got Batman. Yeah. That's, uh, that's good. That is a more refined, better version of it, yeah. <laughs> this is basically like the last episode of Seinfeld. They're all having a little trial. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, at least it makes more sense for these characters to be on trial. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the art here wasn't the best either. Is uh, uh, you know cartoony and um, yeah, it's pretty lackluster. Nice. It's not anything you'll ever really remember seeing. I guess it, it gets the job done well enough. Other than you know him shooting Batman, where it just looked like he kept shining a flashlight at him. <laughs> it just seems weird, weird like. This creative team was driving the Batman ship for yeah. so long. Like this isn't this wasn't this DC's marquee book at the time or no? It was Batman on hard times here in seventy seven? Was Denny O'Neill on Detective? I feel like that one was much more of a but like a more well respected run was Denny O'Neill's Batman stuff. Yeah, this just, this just seems like the C team, you know, and uh, then on Batman, it's like, <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think from what we've read of DC, though, from this era, like, it's been a lot of that, where it's just like, what were you going to do? <laughs> yeah, this was rough. A little bit trapped in the past. So what do you think here, Jank? Uh, Batman 292, 1 out of 10. Ooh, uh, you know what? I'll go right down the pipe here, go with a 5, I think. I think um, that's about right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's nothing too remarkable. Um, yeah, it, it was a little bit goofy, had some goofy moments. Uh, I'm not sure the whole dynamite thing totally holds up, but. <laughs> it's fun in a bad movie kind of way, like we often talk about on here. Like, it's so bad, it's pretty good. But it's, yep. uh, it wasn't, like, awesomely bad, though. Was... No, no. Yeah. <laughs> It's just kind of right down the middle. <laughs> yep. but, like, this must have been collected in, like, a trade paperback, because this looked a lot glossier than, you know, an issue that long ago would have. <laughs> Somebody must have decided this story was worth collecting. I, I just love how all these villains get together and just have a trial. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> hey, did you guys invite Killer Moth? Yeah, yeah, we did. He'll be here. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's one of those things where, like, the Batman episode that the one I was talking about where the I think Two-Face was the judge, like, I think that one does it better, where you put Batman on trial, like, in Arkham, you basically, you have all the villains there already, they capture Batman, and then it's just like, oh, okay, we're putting Batman on trial and blaming him for all our problems, essentially. Like, that's that's a more, you know, a better premise, I think, for okay, a trial. That, that is a great premise, being in an Arkham, everyone's there, they capture Batman, put him on trial. But... Uh, please, pr I pray to God, it was one of those situations where then they're cross-examining him and they realize, you know what, he's not responsible for our problems. <laughs> we need to take responsibility for it. Because right, why even put him on trial? Just murder him right away. Yeah. 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 He's well, clearly like, guilty. Exactly. Why are we having a trial? He's guilty. <laughs> I mean, why did any of them always put him in an elaborate death trap on the old <laughs> TV show instead of just shooting him in the face? <laughs> that is true. 
So, all right, there it is, Batman 292. Uh, Jank, it's your pick next week. What do you got for us? Yeah, well, I mean, I know you love Batman, so I was going to pick another <laughs> Batman, but I decided not to. Uh, I'm going to pick another DC book that I feel like I w- I'm only aware of these characters because of Batman, but I couldn't tell you exactly how. So <laughs> it'll be interesting. Uh, but we're going to pick a DC comic called Metal Men, uh, issue number 50. What? I never heard of these people in my life. Yeah, they had a pretty good run there, I guess. Uh, is, this, team, is this one word, metal men, or two words, or what are we it's dealing with? Two here? words. I think it's a team of maybe like five or so uh, different kind of metallic robots or <laughs> just beings made of metal. <laughs> what what year are we talking? Uh, this is like seventy nine or eighty. There's a there's a good Wonder Woman fruit pie ad in there, so that oh, be- <laughs> that's the real reason why you picked it. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah, I figured we haven't done this book yet. Uh, I was vaguely. Never heard of them in my life. I've never heard of them. It looks like they got quite the, uh, the villains they're going up against in this issue. So I'm, I'm excited about that. All right. So next week, Metal Man issue 50 from either 1979 or 80 or somewhere in there. We'll figure it out. And, uh, once again, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We appreciate the support and buy Monkey Flip. You'll yeah. love it. Talking chimp. <laughs> I wrote it on a crystal typewriter or whatever the hell they have. <laughs> yeah, right. with a Ming robe ribbon that probably doesn't write anything. So anyway, thank you very much. And until next week, don't get any jank on you. <laughs>